To derive a mathematical model of a brushed DC motor, we ignore the details of the commutation and focus on the electrical power that we're putting into the motor and the power that we're getting back out. We know that they have to be equal. So if we look at the power we put into the motor, we know that it's just the current going into the motor times the voltage across the terminals. This IV is electrical power. And we know some of that electrical power is being converted to mechanical power. And mechanical power for us is the torque at the output of the motor shaft times the angular velocity, omega. So this is mechanical power. And if this was all the end of the equation, then we'd have a 100% energy efficiency converting electrical to mechanical power. But that's not the end of the story. We know that we've got a long coil of wire several long coils of wire. And because they're thin, long wires, they have resistance associated with them. And therefore, there's some power loss to heating up those wires. And we can write that as I squared R, the current flowing through the coils times the resistance of the coils. Now, because we also have a coil, then that coil is going to act like an inductor. And we know that the energy in an inductor is 1 half Li squared. So if we take the time derivative of this to get power, then we get power is equal to Li di dt. So there's also some power going to uh, charge up or possibly discharge the inductor. And then there might also be some other terms here, like friction losses, heating, sound. So some of the in input energy gets turned into sound. We can hear the motor spinning, et cetera. But we'll ignore those. OK, so this is our model of power going into the motor and uh, power coming out, essentially. And now, if we take this all and divide by the current on each side, so divide by I, Now we get this as our equation. And it turns out this, this ratio here is very important. So if I take this, I'm going to call that k sub t, or the torque constant. And this is one of the most important properties of any motor. The torque constant is what relates the current going through the motor to the torque that it produces. And we can also write the torque out of the motor is equal to the torque constant times the current. Okay? So this, this k sub t is a fundamental characteristic of any motor. And if we look here in this equation, we can see that the units of the torque constant are newton meters per amp. But if we then write this equation again here using the torque constant, so V is equal to KT times the angular velocity of the motor plus IR plus LDI dt. We can see also that the units of the torque constant can be written in SI units as volt seconds per radian. So the SI units of the angular velocity of the motor are radians per second. So therefore, uh, since this torque constant times angular velocity is a voltage, then we must have units of volt seconds per radian. So when we write the torque constant with these units, newton meters per amp, we call it a torque constant. But if we write it with these units, then it's often called the electrical constant. But it's the same thing, same numerical value when written in SI units. If you use different units, then of course the values might be different. But in SI units, uh, the value is identical. So um, one thing you can notice here is if there's no current flowing through the motor. So remember, this is a, what a motor looks like. It's got a shaft coming out one end. This is where we're measuring the torque and the angular velocity. And then it's got the 
current flowing in I, and then the voltage measured across the leads. So if we have a motor like this and we leave it open circuit, so there's no connection over here, it's just out in space, then we know that no current can flow. And in that case, these two terms down here, IR, LD, IDT, are equal to zero. So open circuit, this equation just becomes V is equal to KT omega. And what this says is that if I spin the output shaft, then I'll actually see a voltage across these two leads, exactly proportional to the angular velocity that I'm spinning it with. And in fact, if you were, this is one way, this is basically how hydro dams work or even hybrid braking on a car. Uh, if we take this angular velocity here, we can use it to charge up a battery on the other side by creating a voltage across here. Okay. So when we write it like this, uh, often we call this term, the back EMF, or back electromotive force. EMF just means voltage, back voltage. So, and when we see it in an equation like this over here, this voltage is essentially opposing the input voltage and therefore reducing the amount of current that flows through the motor. And it also tells us how much uh, voltage we generate here when we leave it open circuit and just spin the output shaft. So a motor converts electrical power to mechanical power, but it can go either way. You can take electrical power and make mechanical power like we usually use it as a motor, or you could drive it the other way and take mechanical power to create electrical power. 